Well, hello once again. Welcome to the video channel. My name's Peter Waters. My call sign is G3OJV. And I've had a number of messages from people that have clicked onto this channel asking about the line isolator. What is it? What does it do? So I thought probably it'd be a good idea to answer all these inquiries in one go by doing another short video covering line isolators. To many, it's a mysterious device. Uh, it's often mentioned in uh, texts and uh, in recommendations, but perhaps not everybody actually understands what it is and what it does, and why perhaps in your station it might be a sensible thing to install. Well, why indeed might you need a line isolator? It's, um, let's consider it. Basically, there are all sorts of things that can be a problem with coax feeder, and we're talking about primary coax feeder here. So when might you need a line isolator? Well, one of the problems with coax fed antennas is that you can get quite a bit of RF on the outside of the uh, coax on the sheathing, and you can get hot spots, you can get RF burns. Now RF burns are pretty uncomfortable. I've had quite a few in my time. Um, basically, as you touch uh, the chassis of the radio or something metal that is on the earth side of the radio, um, you can get a voltage there which is enough to give you an RF burn. It's rather like a needle going into your finger. And uh, at the same time, you can smell burning flesh, which is quite awful, really, to think about. It's only, it's only spontaneous, but you, nevertheless, you can, you can smell it. And you let go pretty quickly. And that really is an RF burn. Um, as I say, it's like a needle going into your, into your finger. Going back to my early days of radio, when we used to have metal microphones and so forth, and uh, we used to get all sorts of tricks. I used to get the occasional RF burn, and uh, you do remember it. <laughs> um, another um, thing, of course, with um, uh, the coax is that it also can conduct uh, interference down the, uh, the outer sheathing, and that can cause interference on the receive side. And of course, that is quite a significant problem these days. So that's another reason to look at the line isolator and also um, you'll find that the VSWR meters that we tend to use in our stations these days um, as good as they are they are affected by uh, voltages on the outer line of the coax and you can get erroneous readings so it's another reason to actually look at line isolator so let's have a look at a uh, feed arrangement for a typical um, antenna. I'll put the diagram up on the screen here. So on the uh, diagram here you can see a typical antenna. The most simplest antenna you can have is a dipole I, I guess. And uh, if you look at the top you've got the dipole horizontals there uh, left and right and the antenna is fed in the center. The left hand vertical line represents the inner conductor and the uh, line, the vertical line on the right hand side represents the outer sheathing. And this is the normal way of feeding a dipole and uh, nothing particularly uh, complicated about that. When we're looking at line isolators, it's important to understand the mechanism involved. And if you're a newcomer to uh, ham radio, um, perhaps it's worth mentioning and it's key to understanding how a line isolator works and why it's necessary, is that RF energy always travels on the surface of a conductor. It doesn't travel through the centre, it travels on the surface of a conductor. Now you've got a, if you've got a normal bit of cable, the RF is travelling on the surface of that conductor. In the case of coax, particularly the outer sheathing, it's not quite the same. So let's take a look. Now, if we look at this second diagram, we've still got the coax cable which is feeding the dipole. The left-hand vertical line representing the inner conductor, which is going to the left-hand side of the dipole. But on the right-hand side, we've now got two paths. And this really is the root of the problem. The energy from your transceiver 
travels up the inner side of the coax cable to the right hand element of the dipole. But energy from that dipole is also able to travel back down the outer of the sheath, in other words the outer surface, and that really is where the problem lies and why we need a line isolator. So you see a line isolator um, only affects the outer side of the coax, the outer side of the sheath, and that's where the problem occurs. Um, it will block off this RF energy that's uh, floating down the outside of the sheathing, and um, it combats RF burns, makes your SWR meters read more accurately, and it also can reduce receiver noise. Another problem that uh, you may have come across in the past, and it's certainly a uh, good reason for having a line isolator is RF into the transceiver uh, microphone amplifier. That's quite a common um, problem. If you get RF into the uh, microphone circuit of the transceiver, then you get all sorts of distortion and you, the first thing you think of is, why is my radio distorted? Is the microphone faulty? In fact, there's nothing wrong with the microphone or the transceiver. It is RF energy getting into the microphone circuit, the microphone preamp, so another good reason for a line isolator. The line isolator is most effective when there's a significant amount of voltage on the outside of the sheet of the coax, and that is dependent on frequency and length of the coax and so forth. Um, you can have a length of aerial and coax cable which produces a very high voltage on one band, on another, the length is such that uh, you've got a much lower voltage. So it can be band dependent, and it is certainly dependent on your particular system. You'll have it some, at some point on some bands, but it depends on the frequency, the length of the coax and so forth, as to how bad it is on each band. Now let's look at receiver noise, because this is quite an interesting one. I'm sure that uh, you, have had problems with noise on the HF bands, receiver noise on the HF bands, and it is a growing problem. Um, we've got so much pollution now uh, on the radio frequencies that noise is getting worse and worse and worse. But some of that noise can be picked up by the coax feeder. The outer sheathing of the coax can pick up noise and very often it's a significant amount of noise it picks up because it is usually traveling very close to the house maybe close to some electrical circuits and so forth and therefore any noise that is there can be induced into the coax cable and ultimately arrive as noise in your receiver so a line isolator can actually block that off by a significant amount. So energy that is coming down the outside of the coax, which is noise picked up from the, uh, the, the proximity of the coax, is going to appear as noise in your receiver. I've done several tests over the last year or so, and I've often noticed that there's about one S-point difference sometimes, depending on whether I have the line isolator in or out of circuit. And that's a significant amount. I know one S point is not a, you know, it's not, the, it's not a great thing, but if you can reduce your noise level by one S point or a bit more, that is really worth having. Now, some uh, people have asked me about line isolators, um, whether you should put it um, down at the receive end or the transceiver end, or you should put it high up in the antenna. Well, the answer is that both positions can be valid, um, but in this particular case, um, where we're talking about um, RF burns and noise and SWR meters, the line isolator that is going to cure all those will be situated just by the transceiver. Um, putting a line isolator high up um, is not going to affect any of those problems. So the line isolator in this particular case should be down at the transceiver end. So can you make your own line isolator? Well, yes, you can. Um, you can get yourself a ferrite core and you can wind some coax cable around the perimeter of that core. Around about 10 or 15 turns will do. You need a fairly large core because you need to get some reasonable number of turns on the coax cable. So 
um, either um, RG58 or Mini RG8 or something like that uh, will do the trick. And uh, uh, it's not critical, the number of turns aren't critical. I've uh, found uh, that using uh, the Fairrite cores, which are two and a half inches diameter, and they're 43 mix, um, does the job quite well, and uh, I've often used that myself. Now, I have mentioned the problem with uh, VSWR meters, and I can't overemphasize this. Time and time and time again, I've found that the VSWR meters that I've been using are not telling the truth. They'll be okay on some frequencies, but not on others. It's not because they're frequency sensitive, it's because they're sensitive, sensitive to the amount of RF voltage on the outside of the coax. And a good test is change the length of the coax cable. If you, if you want to splice in a bit of extra coax cable, do your VSWR readings again on that particular band. If they change, then the VSWR meter is at fault because change in the length of coax cable shouldn't affect the VSWR. Um, when I say that, I'm talking about fairly short changes. We all know that um, coax cable has losses and therefore um, the longer the length of coax cable, the better the VSWR happens to be. But I'm talking about changing the length by about two or three meters. Change the length by about two or three meters. If the VSWR appears to change, then that meter is being affected by voltage on the outside of the coax. And that may well be one of the easiest ways of checking how much you need a line isolator. The amount that the VSWR changes when you um, alter the length of the coax cable. Now, a number, of these, a number of these videos that I've been doing are really for newcomers. So I'm sure that if you're an experienced ham, you know most of what I've said anyway. And you may well have switched off by now. <laughs> but I think it's essential for newcomers to understand why you need a line isolator. Um, it's, not one, it's not a sort of one of these odd things you think, well, perhaps, perhaps it will work or it won't work. It certainly will work. It will make a difference to your station. It will stop you getting RF burns. It will make your VSWR meter read um, more logically. And it could well improve your noise. So there we are. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I do appreciate you clicking on these videos and so forth. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you find them useful so that you can catch up with uh, other videos. Um, these videos not only cover um, sort of techniques and things you can do, but they will also cover equipment reviews occasionally. So, so keep in touch. In the meantime, enjoy your hobby, stay safe, and look forward to meeting you again soon. Take care.